Hello, welcome to another weekly update. Um, this one, uh, as you can probably see from behind me, if uh, if you're familiar with UK hotels, you will recognise the um, the distinctive purple of a Premier Inn room. Um, yes, I am at Heathrow Airport. More on that later. Um, but I'm going to keep this one relatively short because uh, it has to go up on the uh, the hotel Wi-Fi to get to you. Um, so that's going to be a bit of a gamble. So, a couple of things to talk about this week. Um, the first of those is about the bot framework. Now, I don't, um, I don't kind of announce everything that happens on the bot framework because it is just one part of what makes up Teams development at the moment. Um, but every now and again, you know, there's something worth shouting about um, that sort of pertains to um, to kind of Team Dev, and I think this is it. Um, there's a, a GA on um, a number of tools for the bot framework and also a new version of the SDK. So Ignite, they announced um, a version 4 of the SDK which was um, brought a load of new kind of functionality and a lot of stability and, um, and stuff like that. This is now a 4.1, so um, a GA of 4.1 including a GA of the tools. So the tools include the bot framework emulator, so there is now a GA of the emulator which is great. Um, also WebChat v4, which I'll talk about in a second, and then newer versions of both the C-sharp and the JavaScript SDKs. So, um, talking about the emulator, um, basically it's kind of nicer, it's faster, it's more stable, it doesn't crash as much. Um, anyone who's kind of used the emulator from the beginning, um, it's been super, super useful having that emulator right from the start. I uh, really appreciate the team putting it out before it was GA. Um, obviously that, that meant it wasn't perfect, um, but, but it was much better to have that and kind of struggle through it. Um, but, 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 what else, what else, what else? Oh, WebChat v4. So WebChat is um, the thing that lets you embed bot framework conversations inside web pages. There's a load of new kind of, well, called Canvas, I suppose, Canvas updates um, for things like graphics and logos and layout, colors and padding, sizes and all that sort of stuff. That means you can have a really rich kind of interface now um, in those bot framework conversations. So there's a really cool screenshot that you should go and look at um, in the um, in the blog post, which I'll link to around the weather. Yeah, some sort of bot that gives you the weather um, and uh, nice kind of graphics of the sun and the five-day forecast. You know, like like you expect the temperatures and all that sort of stuff. So um, nice layouts and stuff that you can do now with the web chat, which is really good. Um, and then. Uh, the SDKs have been refreshed and updated, uh, fixed some bugs. I think there were some bugs with Cosmos DB apparently, so they're now being fixed, which is great. Um, and then just other kind of stability, kind of testy stuff, um, you know, fixing the bugs, making it more stable, making it more robust, um, and all those other things. Um, so that's all good to see. Um, so if you're a um, if you're a bot framework SDK user, then uh, you will welcome this, I'm sure. Uh, sort of following on from that is an announcement around TLS um, and security. So if you're using uh, the Azure bot service, um, then you should be aware that it will only accept TLS 1.2 from the 4th of December. So a couple of weeks away, uh, three weeks away, um, it, will stops, uh, it will stop accepting TLS 1.0 and 1.1 connections. It has to be TLS 1.2. Um, apparently, like according to this, this announcement, most people are already doing that. Um, so it should be all right. Um, if not, it needs an upgraded browser, it needs an upgraded operating system, something like that. Um, so yeah, worth, um, worth taking that on board, making sure you're using 1.2 and yeah. Um, there are there is a list actually of clients that are that they know are unable to use 1.2, so that is uh, well, I'm not going to go through the list. It's it's like Android 4.3. I am going to go through the list apparently. Android 4.3 and earlier, Firefox 5 and earlier, IE pretty much everywhere by the look of it, and Safari. Uh, oh, no, that's not true. IE on Windows 7 and earlier. Sorry, um, and Windows Phone and Safari 6 and earlier. So. Uh, work to do for you if you're still connecting uh, with anything other than 1.2. Uh, and finally, I think, um, let's talk about this. So, mm, my, I put a blog post out yesterday 
it seems that Microsoft are working on a migration from um, taking people from the Google G Suite um, to Office 365. So um, that would include things like mailboxes, calendar items, and contacts. And it would be an automated kind of system admin level way of moving people, like moving an organization away from G Suite and moving them into Office 365. Um, there's not been a way to do that sort of en masse before. Um, you've been able to move mailboxes and individual users can migrate themselves across. But if you're an organization uh, that started out on G Suite and now you want to go uh, Office 365, they, there's not been an easy and good way of doing that. And uh, it looks like Microsoft are, are making a first party way of doing that. You know, there have been third party solutions. There still are third party solutions to do this. Um, but this is something that Microsoft are working on. And I found it kind of almost by mistake going through the, uh, the Microsoft 365 roadmap. It's quite new, um, it's still in development, um, and it's got a estimated release date of Q2 next year. So if you're on Google G Suite and you're looking to migrate and you can wait until Q2 next year, this might be of interest to you. Um, there is a similar, as you might expect, Google has a migration tool to go the other way. So it's kind of good to see Microsoft um, making these kind of migration tools available. All right, um, so I promised to um, explain why I was in the Purple Palace, and uh, the reason is um, Pexip, who um, make uh, some video interrupt kit, uh, kind of a big name in, in UC, uh, are running a training day for MVPs um, tomorrow, and uh, so that's going to be in Oslo, so uh, I live too far away from a airport that flies directly to Oslo to make it worthwhile and me not coming down the night before. So that's what I'm doing. If you're aware of the Heathrow Terminal 3 Premier Inn, um, I have one of the rooms that is not on the outside, so it looks out onto the atrium, which means it is both airless and noisy. Um, so happy, happy days. Um, but I have to get up at like four or three, four o'clock anyway, so I guess it doesn't really matter. Um, anyway, so I'm going to try and shoot some video when I'm over there if I get a chance, but I might not, so no promises. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's going to be kind of the first half of my week. Um, and then uh, I will do the rest of my week and we'll do another weekly update next week as we always do. So thanks very much for watching. Um, if you if you want to kind of uh, keep up to date what's going on in between, have a look at my Twitter feed as well, T-O-M-O-R-G-A-N, um, and my uh, website, uh, so thoughtstuff.co.uk. Have a great week and I will speak to you again next time.